Hello and welcome to worship with Trinity United Methodist Church in Gainesville, Florida. My name is Steve Price. I'm one of the pastors here and we are so glad that you have chosen to spend this time with us today. I hope you'll let us know that you have worshiped with us and you can do that simply by posting a comment whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook or if you'd like you can go to your app store and download the Trinity app, Trinity GNV, and let us know using the connect card that you've been with us. You'll also find a place there where you can share a prayer concern, and we would love to be remembering you in our prayers this week. I also want you to know that we are not long away at all from celebrating Christmas Eve, and we would love to invite you to join us either in person or online on December 24th at 4.30 p.m. for a traditional worship service or at 7 p.m. for a modern worship service. If you are joining us in person, we do ask that you go online and pre-register for those services, and you can do that again at trinitygnv.org. Welcome to this time, and let me now invite you to receive this call to worship. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who had a terrible day. She forgot her lunch, she skinned her knee on the playground, and no one wanted to sit by her on the bus home. At the end of the day, she sank into her mother's arms and her mother asked, honey, what was the best part of your day today? And the little girl cried and said, nothing. The entire day was terrible. The mother wiped away her tears and said, sometimes, we just have to look really hard. There is always some good. And the little girl looked at her mom and asked, oh, what is good about today? And the mother said, for starters, you are here in my arms. Friends, when we gather together to worship God, we are here in God's arms. May we recognize that gift and in doing so, so joy. Let us worship holy God. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the new. I dream of time with family. I dream of having fun with friends. I dream of a happy, healthy planet. I dream of live music and large family gatherings. We dream of every little thing that brings joy and know they come from God. So today we light the candle of joy as a reminder that God's dream for this world involves the end of all tears. 
God's dream for this world involves joy that is overflowing and contagious. So may this fire burn bright, and as it does, may we sing. May we dance. May we hold on to the people we love. May we sow joy in an uncertain and hurting world, and may we trust in the mercy of God, our Savior. Amen. Let me invite you to join me as we go together to God in prayer. Let's pray. Great and, and glorious God, we are indeed in, in awe of you, of your creation, of your glory, of your generosity. And of the ways that even in the midst of everything, you know us, you love us. And on this week of Advent, where we acknowledge, name, and seek joy, we give you thanks that you are a God who sustains us, who blesses us who joins us in our toil, who guides us, comforts us, and bring about a harvest of joy. God, we give you thanks that in all your glory and all your greatness, you continue to be a God present with us, patient with us. And I pray, God, especially in these moments of worship, that we would not just acknowledge that, but that we would seek it, that we would open ourselves up to it in such a way that we would find ourselves, again, not just acknowledging your presence, but leaning on you, relying on you, seeking you. And so, God, guide us in these moments of worship as we depart from this time, as we go back out into the world, whatever that looks like in this unique season, as we seek to serve you, as we seek to continue to follow Jesus. And so, God, as we seek to be formed by you, we continue to pray together that prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing the joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis One of the ways that we worship God is by offering ourselves and our gifts to God in worship. Um, And so we take a moment to to give our gifts, to acknowledge them, and to pray over them. In a moment, you'll see on the screen several ways that you can give in this unique time. Um, I also want to let you know that through those same means, you can give to this week's Mission Box, which is the Christian Study Center of Gainesville. Let me invite you to join me as we pray over this offering. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we know that your generosity knows no bounds. We know that that all that we have is yours, and we know that you have called us to step out in faith, 
and to give back to you. And so as we give God to you through the ministries of this church, we pray that you would bless these gifts and bless us as we seek to use them for your kingdom. Amen. Would you pray with me? Creator God, Scripture is flooded with dreamlike images the lion lying down with the lamb, justice rolling like a mighty river, swords being beaten into plowshares, the prisoner being set free, good news to the oppressed, the whole world rejoicing. To our human ears, there are times when these words can sound like nothing more than a far-off dream, downplaying prophecy to fantasy. However, what we know is that to dream is to hope, and to hope is to imagine, and to imagine is to wonder, and to wonder is to believe, and to believe is to live and breathe for your promised day. So give us the strength to listen as we dream, O oh God. For deep down, we know your words are the very thing we need. Amen. Good morning to you. Or if you're joining us later in the day or the week, welcome. So glad to be with you this morning. I pray that as we share this time together, God will speak a word into your life, a word that you specifically might need to hear today. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Advent, which comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming or visit, is the period of the four Sundays leading up to Christmas Eve. And whereas January 1 is the beginning of the calendar year, Advent, for us as Christians, is the beginning of the Christian year. Advent is the time that we prepare for and anticipate the coming of Christ. We remember with longing and anticipation that the Jews had for the Messiah. And then our longing and our need for forgiveness, salvation, and a new beginning. And even as we look back and celebrate the birth of Christ in a humble stable, we also look forward in anticipation of the second coming of Christ and the sure and certain hope of fulfillment of those promises. You know, when I was growing up, I don't think I had a clue of what Advent was or when it began. For me, what marked the beginning of the anticipation of Christmas was the arrival of the Sears Roebuck catalog. For those of you who don't have a clue what I'm talking about, let me explain. It was the catalog of the Sears department store, swollen to about three inches thick, and it had this huge section filled with toys, any and every toy that I could possibly even dream of, and then many that I didn't even know anything about. Perhaps the equivalent today is the Amazon wish list. Upon the arrival of this catalog, I would painstakingly sift through every page of the catalog, all of the toys, and note the special toys or items as I made my list for Santa Claus. 
As I made that list, one that was within reason to be sure, I had the confidence that I would get at least one or two items that were on my Christmas list. Now, this wasn't a sign of arrogance or a sign that my parents had overindulged me because they hadn't. It was just plain and simple trust. Uh, It was that anticipation that comes from knowing, trusting in the goodness and generosity of Santa that at least one item would appear on my list and underneath the tree that Christmas morning. I specifically remember what I asked for one year. I must have been about nine or ten, I'm thinking. And, And it's really the only year that I can look back on and remember exactly what I asked for that Christmas. But I had two specific items that I wanted. One was a Briar model horse, a black and white prancing pinto with a removable western saddle. I thought it was the greatest thing. I had a handful of briar horses and I just loved playing with them and I just so wanted that pinto. The other special item that I wanted was a blue Samsonite ballet bag. I was a student at Poe Falls Dance Studio, and I yearned for this specific ballet bag to carry my extra ballet shoes and, and, and leotard and tights with me to the studio. And Judy and, and Kimmy, the directors of, of Poe Falls and now Dance Alive, um, Susan, Phoebe, Lori, if you're watching anywhere out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I wanted that blue ballet bag. I went tonight to bed every single night in December with visions of that pinto horse and blue ballet bag dancing in my head. I just knew that on Christmas morning I would run down the stairs and turn the corner into the living room and see that pinto horse and ballet bag under the tree. What a sense of anticipation and joy and trust. I had those feelings even more so years later when I was pregnant with my first child. You know, for women who carry a child in their womb, there are nine months of anticipation and joy. You know, it's really an odd and beautiful thing to know that this life is, is forming within you and growing. I remember waiting anxiously for the first time that I would feel my child move within my womb. How strange and exciting it would be to feel that elbow shift or that knee push. And then I had that confident knowledge and trust that I would give birth to a perfect and healthy baby with ten fingers and ten toes and a turned up nose. And guess what? She has one. I know that Mary and Elizabeth also had that sense of joy anticipation and trust when they saw each other pregnant for the first time. In the Gospel of Luke, we hear the account of how how Mary, after being told by the angel that she was going to conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit and give birth to God's son, she went to find her cousin Elizabeth. And then at three months pregnant, when she gets there, uh, she also sees Elizabeth miraculously pregnant in her old age. Elizabeth, six months pregnant. And when Elizabeth opens the door and and they see each other pregnant for the first time, even the child in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy. And Elizabeth says, Blessed is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. And at that moment... Mary bursts into joyous song. She's exclaiming and claiming the fulfillment of God's dreams and promises. So I invite you to follow along with me as I read these words from Mary's song. You can follow along in your Bible or on the screen. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. 
He shows mercy to everyone from generation, from one generation to the next, who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy. Just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, this song Mary sings is known as the Magnificat because Mary begins by saying, my soul glorifies the Lord, or this, this translation says, with all my heart I glorify God. In it she praises God and, and reminds us of why and how she came to put her trust and faith in God. God is mighty, she says, and has done great things. God shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next. Mary is confident, and she anticipates the birth of her Savior, that with that birth, God's mercy is surrounding her, caring for her, and that God holds her future with merciful and loving hands. She also goes on to talk about what that future will be. She says that God will bring about good things for all. And the interesting thing is that Mary, like most of the prophets, speaks about the future not as it will be at some anticipated time, but she speaks about it as if it has already come to pass. Mary doesn't say God will scatter the proud and the innocent and the, and the arrogant. Mary doesn't say God will fill the hungry with good things and will send the rich away empty. Mary doesn't even say God will help us and extend mercy. No, instead, Mary speaks in the past tense. She uses the Greek aorist tense. Mary sings, God has shown strength. God has brought down the powerful. And God has lifted up the lowly. Mary sings that God has already done these things. God's sense of time is strange to us, as Jan Richardson says, and, and not what we can fully understand but Mary pro proclaims that God, as much as God will do work, God is doing work, and God has already done this work. God has already accomplished the work of redeeming and restoring the world and each of us. The Reverend Dr. Casey Baggett shares a story about her ordination. I was reading about it this week. This ordination had been a time that she had been anticipating, uh, dreaming of, being ordained in the United Church of Christ. But then a few days before the service, she came across some words in the bulletin that really gave her pause. There was a place in the service where one voice said of Casey, she is worthy. And then the congregation was to respond in unison, she is worthy indeed, with an exclamation point. She immediately went to her senior pastor, who was in charge of the service, and explained that she was uncomfortable with those words, that there were many others who were far more worthy than she to be ordained. In fact, she said, it was ridiculous to have so many people proclaim, she is worthy, exclamation point. Those words simply had to go. The senior pastor responded um, pretty matter-of-factly that the words would stay for two reasons. First of all, he said, the bulletins are already printed. And second, and much more importantly, he said, we're keeping it because you have missed the point. That affirmation isn't so much about you as it is about God. It's the congregation saying that they believe in a God so loving, so powerfully compassionate that God can transform most any willing soul 
into being worthy, even you. That's the core truth of Mary's song, that God can, will, and has already transformed each of us and our world through the coming of Christ. That's what we dream of in Advent. That's what we anticipate. That's the dream spoken of in in Psalm 26, the theme for this series. Psalm 26 says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, they were like those who dream. We were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoiced. If as a child I could trust in Santa to make my dreams a reality, how much more can we trust in God's dreams and visions to become reality? God who makes all things new. God who has pulled down the powerful and has lifted up the lowly. God who has filled the hungry and sent the rich away. God who has promised and remembers us and extends mercy. That's the dream in which we can trust because God, our Savior, has come. And then we sing. We sing like Mary. We sing peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinner reconciled. That's why we sing light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die. That's why we sing with joy. He rules the world with truth and grace. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. That's why we sing This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him laud, the babe, the son of Mary. Because God has done this in Jesus Christ. That's why we sing with joy. You know, on that Christmas morning many years ago, I ran down the stairs and, and swung around the, the doorway into my grandparents' living room, and I looked under the tree, and there underneath the tree was my coveted blue ballet bag and the prancing pinto in the western saddle. As a trusting child on Christmas Eve, I just knew on Christmas morning that my dreams would become reality. Trusting in God, I know God's dreams are reality. God in Jesus Christ is making all things new. My soul magnifies the Lord Because God has done great things for me. God, our Savior, has made me worthy, has made you worthy, and can and will and has redeemed and saved all creation. Thanks be to God. Let me invite you to pray with me. Loving and merciful God, with all my heart, I glorify you. With all our hearts, we glorify you. And I know, O oh God, that, that there are many who feel that they are unworthy because of what they have done or or said how they have acted that they are unworthy of your mercy and grace and yet oh god we know 
that you alone are worthy and in Jesus Christ and through his coming, through his life and death and suffering and resurrection, you have made us worthy, that we are healed, that we are reconciled, that we are redeemed. And so, O oh God, we give thanks to you. With all our hearts, we glorify you. Amen. Friends, we are all forgiven. And as children of God, we are all invited to come to this table where God has set a place for you and for me to come with joy to meet Jesus here in the bread and in the cup, to remember his great love for us and for all the world, and to celebrate the feast in anticipation of him coming again. We remember at this table how Jesus offered himself fully when he came into this world, in his ministry, and even up to the point of his death on a cross. On the night before he died, he gathered with his closest friends, his disciples, for a final meal. And he took bread that night and he broke it, shared it with them and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took a cup and he gave thanks and he shared it with them and said, take and drink all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And so just as those disciples did so long ago, we continue to gather at the table to remember, to give thanks, and to anticipate the feast that is still to come. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks for this table of grace and for your presence here with us. We pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on all those who will receive these gifts in these moments and on the bread and the cup themselves, that they may truly be signs and vessels of Christ's presence and love for us in this moment. And in this, may we be nourished for faithful living, to go out and to spread your joy with the world, the good news of Jesus, Emmanuel, come. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let me invite you to join me now in receiving them.
The King of Kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. So I invite you as you go out today, this week, to know that I am worthy, you are worthy, that the God of grace and love has, will, and does save us. Go in peace.